It starts off with these long ass, super long ass opening credits. I hate that. It's got this weak ass Goosebumps music playing the whole time too. The tone is all off, bro. This should sound whimsical almost. Who is this, Danny Elfman? Of course it is. Wow, I was joking, bro. Lorenz Tate is the main character. He's a senior in high school and he's trying to figure out what he wants to do with his life. He's got a bunch of different hustles and everything. He'd be running numbers for people, whatever the fuck that means. And he also delivers milk every morning with his best friend, Chris Tucker. Goddamn right. I'm Lady, you chump suckers. Oh, fuck you. Be right here. Oh, this motherfucker, don't no, cold as hell out here. The movie takes place in the 60s, maybe the 70s. I'm not sure. It was before shape ups were invented, though, clearly. There's no way. Look at this atrocity. I gotta cover this up, bro. I'm gonna get demonetized. I just be thinking about, like, what am I gonna do afterwards, right? I ain't fighting no white man's war. Shit. Them VA Kongs, Chungs, whatever the fuck ain't done shit to me. I just wanna do something that's different. Yeah, well, getting your fucking head blown off here is different. <laughs> Lorenz Tate is living his happy hood life, getting all the bitches or whatever, having a good ass time. He really get hella bitches, by the way. They really emphasize that. I heard your truck. Seems like you hear my truck every morning. Uh, so you going to school today? Been lay in bed all morning. Oh. Hey, Anthony. You know you brought me luck the other day. Uh, he goes and runs all his numbers around the town and whatnot. He's running said numbers for this dude, Kirby, who owns this sketchy ass pool hall they hang out at. He's played by Keith David. Y'all know Keith David, right? He's that one nigga. He got a really cool voice, just like me. He an all-star. Ain't you gonna be duck hunting with your daddy? Oh yeah, we're gonna go next weekend. You know these motherfuckers down south. I wonder if half the time they believe what they be saying. Nigga, what your little narrow ass doing up in here, man? Kirby, man, you know he too goddamn young to be up in here, man. Put your money where your mouth is. This light-skinned lady comes in and she starts trying to kick Lorenz Tate off the pool table. This is actually young Terrence Howard, though, believe it or not. He's in the movie for a little bit. He's like the neighborhood light-skinned bully. He's always picking on Lorenz Tate and trying to fight him and shit. It's not cool. Run out of here without paying me after that boy whooped you. Oh. Yes, game. <laughs> wait, 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 this is two dollars. <laughs> See, uh, you bet me. So that means uh, you owe me some money too. Fucking playing with me, bitch. I'm not fucking playing. What the fuck? What the fuck are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? Terrence Howard starts whooping that trick and he gets kicked out of the pool hall now. Seriously, okay, this nigga is dressed exactly like DJ from Hustle and Flow. He talking like him too a little bit. He keeps saying main and shit all the time. It's pretty funny to me. Man, man. Man, you know. Man, when you get the fuck. Keith David goes up to Lorenz Tate and tries to make him feel better about getting his ass beat. You all right, kid? Oh, man. Just a little cut, you know. You want to take a little run with me? They go on a little ride together now. Keith David got this nice car and he lets Lorenz Tate drive it around for a little bit. It's really fun. They even go and spin the block on some of Keith David ops right quick. i just be a minute here. Yeah, alright. <clears throat> you picked the wrong house, fool! Oh, get the fuck up off the spider! Oh my god. Oh. Lorenz Tate goes home and he's eating dinner with his family now. They start talking about his future and he decides he doesn't want to go to college after high school. He wants to join the Marines and go to fucking Vietnam for some reason. What the fuck? You think about what you're going to major in, baby? The Marines. You What'd you say? You always said the Marines and fighting over in Korea made a man out of you. He's at this house party with the homies now. They all talk about their plans for after high school. Chris Tucker is here and he keeps saying he wants to be a pimp or something. It's actually hilarious, man. This thing is so funny, man. Pimping running my family. My great great granddaddy was a slave and he was a pimp. He used to have holes, pick his cotton in the field. He didn't have to do shit. Lorenz Tate's about to go off to war now. 
He gets some final goodbye cheeks, and now it's a Vietnam War movie. I bet you ain't see that shit coming, right? Unless you saw this before. You probably did. Shit. Logan! I think it's time we get these fucking things off our asses! We get some brand new characters now. They is military homeboys. He got this one super crazy military homeboy. He's played by Bonkeen. Boom Gang Woodbine. Y'all know him, right? Evil Dave Chappelle face says. He a good actor, man. They definitely typecast him as the crazy dude, but he really good at that shit. He needs a horror movie or something, bro. He a all-star. Chris Tucker is here too in Vietnam. Look at that. That pimping thing didn't work out for him after all, I guess. I guess it's true what they say though. That's ain't easy. Pimping. I'm finna go get high. I mean real high. They all in the jungle doing Vietnam activities. It's pretty gruesome stuff, man. These war scenes get pretty intense. People getting blown up and shit. I definitely can't show you any of it. Looks like we nailed us an officer. Been looking for one of these since Cleon and I got here in 66. Ain't that right, Cleon? <laughs> Just like you, sir. I'm collecting me a souvenir. Crazy. <laughs> so there's a lot of stuff going on, as you can see. Bokeem Woodbine cuts some dude's head off and keeps it as like a good luck charm. That's pretty crazy. Eventually, the smell starts getting to everybody, so they finally decide to all stand up to him. Ain't a one of us got as much as a splinter in his finger since I cut this head off. Man, Cleon, you need to get the fuck on with that bullshit, man. That head smell like shit. Get rid of that fucking head AS, a fucking P. Or I'm gonna have your ass court martial when we get back to the rear. We're in a world of shit now. I just buried our luck. <laughs> Lorenz Tate tells Chris Tucker that he's got a daughter back home now waiting for him. He got his girlfriend pregnant that night at the party before he left, apparently. Damn, bro. Just way to go, man. This is all way better than college, right? Yeah, serious, man. Got a little girl back at home. Oh, man, that's groovy, man. That's groovy. You know how I survived 26 months in the bush. Because I don't think about the world, Skip. Lorenz State finally comes back home. He's got these sideburns popping now, so that means he a grown up now, I guess. He gets back to his neighborhood, and of course he goes to see his brand new baby daughter. Actually, no, he doesn't. Is that, hold, hold, hold on for a sec. Straighten up there, Marine. He feeling good. And I'm motherfucker. Oh, shit. Check this motherfucker out, man. Man, I'm back. <laughs> so Chris Tucker is a junkie now. He got hooked on drugs real bad in Vietnam. Sad Vietnam. Hood, sad Vietnam movie. They glued some of these fucking fake ass sideburns on his shit as well. We get it, bro. It's the 70s or something. These shits do not look real, though. That shit look like some flex tape. Nah, I'm joking. They're not that bad. They are hella fake, though. I'm cool, baby. I'm skippy, baby. I'm still pimping. He goes to see his parents, and they eating dinner together. It looks pretty good, bro. This nigga is crushing whatever this shit is. Uh, I'm guessing they was just handing out these fake sideburns on the set. The dad got some, too. That's that's pretty funny. Scratch all that though, this dude still has not gone to see his damn kid yet. This nigga stalling like a motherfucker. It's probably something wrong with him. He probably don't want to look at a baby. He been shooting people all day or whatever. It makes sense. Still though, it's pretty sad. Well, what'd you do over there? What was it like? Oh, God. <clears throat> you know, a lot of them boys went over there and got hooked on them drugs and stuff. No bad habits, ma. Except for a little killer. <laughs> my man, Joe, what's happening? Ah. I was in demolitions and my fucking hand gets blown off, oh, man. man. Shit. Keith David is here too, protecting the numbers. Lorenz Tate asks if he can come back and run the numbers alongside him like they used to. What the fuck is even running numbers, bro? Somebody explain it to me, please. Yes, yeah, me. Yeah, I'm to <laughs> what's happening? Man. I've been everywhere looking for a kid. No, you haven't. 
You haven't been everywhere looking for a gig. You just fucking got here. You ain't even go home yet. This is your first day back, nigga. Why are you lying for? You just gonna go back to your old high school job after one day of being home? I still don't understand your plan, bro. What specifically were you planning to do with your military experience? You seem really sure about that shit. Did you have any other steps in this plan besides join military? Work for me. Yeah, you know, run the numbers. Pigs run me out of business. I'm just hustling here and there, trying to get over just like everybody else. This nigga finally goes home to see his daughter, but first he stops at the butcher shop, of course. Doesn't go home yet. The butcher gives him a job, and now it makes sense that he didn't want to go home. He probably didn't want to come home empty-handed with no job and all that. That's pretty admirable. I feel like he deserved a couple days off, though, at least. God damn, this nigga was in an actual war. Check out Sleeping Beauty back there. Cuddy. I see my little girl sleeping back there. Yeah, I wanted you to meet him. Look here. Clifton Powell's in the movie. He plays this pimp Mac Daddy type character named Cuddy. Apparently Cuddy was smashing Lorenz Tate girl all day and night while he was in the military. Now he still pops up and he be looking out for her and throwing money at her occasionally. Lorenz Tate, he don't like that. I used to see Cuddy, is that what you wanna hear? You got a pimp around my daughter? Oh, he is not a pimp. But don't jump on me for having a life. You didn't want one with me. Anyway, he goes back to Kirby's later and he's hanging out, playing pool. Terrence Howard comes in and starts trying to bully him again like before. Clean up time, cowboy. See, that's why I kicked his fucking ass when he was a little kid, man. Of course, you do got that fine ass Juanita. My boss man, Cuddy, he used to tap that ass while you was over in the knob. You're making me feel bad. <laughs> Wow, Terrence Howard. You are a terrible bully, man. That's why light skinned niggas shouldn't be bullies. You don't even know what you're doing. They do another time jump, and Lorenz Tate is a full on bum ass nigga now. He can't get a good job. Everybody being mean to him. Uh, yeah, bro. What did you expect? You thought she was gonna be sweet? You thought going to Vietnam was gonna make you richer somehow? Why would you possibly think that? You shouldn't have went to You're college. You're a dummy, bitch. This girl is pregnant again also. She always be roasting him, saying he not a good provider, and she tells him to get a better job. She really be letting this nigga have it, bro. It's the power of the mind. We will ourselves a little boy. Can you will yourself a better job? <clears throat> in case you haven't noticed, this here is the real world. Ain't no free meals here like in the Marines. Lorenz Tate is riding around with Keith David and hand blown off dude. Apparently they have some plan to rob one of those armored truck shits. The truck is supposed to take a bunch of old money and burn it and make some new money. I don't know. It's a heist movie now though. Damn, this movie is a hell of movies, bro. This shit is a hood coming of age a Vietnam heist movie. And they stop by the post office before they make their final run to Washington, man. All the way to Washington DC where they burn the money. I get the money together to get the plans going. But you got to be the master planner, you know? Lorenz Tate ends up losing his job at the butcher shop also. That's pretty sad. Everything's going bad for him. Clifton Powell shows up again and starts roasting him about his shitty life. Nah, he's actually being pretty reasonable right now. I would definitely be this nigga friend, man. You can have the girl, bro. Shit, make me a pimp too or something. I could be a helper pimp. Hey, young blood. I care about Juanita. I care about a whole lot. But you back now, and I'm gone. You find yourself in a jam and shit need a little cash, you come see me, I front you. Stay the fuck away from my family. I don't want no trouble. <laughs> Does she suck you? Make you feel like a man? Then she wasn't doing it like that before you went to the war, now was she? Suck this. Come on, I got a present for you, suck it! Suck it, nigga! Lorenz Tate decides to stop bluffing and he's putting his heist plan into motion. He goes and recruits a bunch of people. He gets this one chick. It's his girlfriend's little sister. She's like a Black Panther. She popped up earlier. Whatever, man. She died then. He also gets Keith David, Chris Tucker, and a hand blown off dude. I should start remembering people's names, bro. I said that shit earlier, too. I don't know this nigga's name. We all know what to do at the point of attack because we've gone over that shit enough. I want you to position yourself approximately 10 feet from the alleyway. 
I think we need another man on the street with Skip. We don't need no another man. Shit, I can see. We might well put a motherfucking ad in the paper then. We gonna get everybody. You know, this is the first time he's shown any sort of tactical knowledge type shit. They didn't show him coming up with plans and shit like this in the war. It's fine. It still works, you know. It's implied that he's good at stuff like this, but they definitely should have showed him doing it earlier. They really underdeveloped this nigga character, to be honest. It's still a great performance, of course, but he doesn't really have that many defining character traits. Family man, military, fake sideburns. That's about as far as his personality goes. I was a man! Yeah. I said, y'all know who I'm talking about. Wow, can you believe it? Oh, look at this nigga, man. He got hair now? Ew, I'm not used to that. That should look crazy to me. So before they execute their heist, they want to add Bokeem Woodbine to their team. For what though? Not only do you have hella niggas already, but this nigga is an actual crazy person. You definitely better off without him. Listen to Chris Tucker. There ain't gonna be no money left for a nigga. Well look here man, Skip is in, period, all right? You remember that last battle? He froze up. And I still trust him with my life, Cleon. Okay, can we talk about this bank robbing team for a second? You got a dude with one hand, a dude with one leg, a heroin addict, and a damn Dave Chappelle face ass. It's not gonna work, bro. But it's time for the heist now. I guess they just getting straight to it. Y'all not gonna do a stakeout or nothing first? Y'all not gonna case the fucking truck or something one time? All right, let's do it. So they just end up shooting everybody. Nothing when how was supposed to. They were fucking so unprepared. It's not even funny. What is this heist, bro? Y'all are Marines, right? These are regular ass security guards, my nigga. Why did this go so badly? They blow up the entire truck now, including all the fucking money almost. These niggas suck, bro. The girl dies and the getaway car gets destroyed also. Now they got a getaway on foot from all the destruction they just caused. And you know what? Out of all the stupid decisions they made today, the fucking makeup was the worst idea. Y'all should've worn some ski mask or something, bro. You can take a ski mask off very easily. What are you gonna do about this fucking paint on your face now? Y'all in the middle of the street looking crazy with paint on your face. What a terrible heist, man. It does say a lot about our military, though. These niggas had this whole strategic plan, but in the end, they just blew everything up and shot everybody. And radio said they got Joe's stupid ass. It's gonna burn all this shit. Bless Uncle Sam for you, baby. Money to buy. It's a happy ending now. Psych, no, it's not. Bokeem Woodbine ends up getting caught afterwards and he snitches on everybody because he a bitch ass nigga. Yeah, I think it goes without saying at this point, but you definitely should not have added him to your heist team. Lorenz Tate's in court now, getting sentenced. You would think that since he just came back from a war and he got fucked over on his job situation, the judge might go easy on him, right? But no, that's not how it happens. You should've went to college, my nigga. What are you doing? Sad hood movie. I too was a Marine and I served my country proudly in World War II. A real war, I may add. I do hereby sentence you to the custody of the Attorney General of the United States for a period of 15 years to life. For all the shit I did for this motherfucking country? Man, fuck you! Fuck you! He's on his way to jail now and it just ends here. Goddamn, that's some sad shit, right? 
On top of that, you know Pimp Mac Daddy is definitely smashing his girl right now. Suck it, nigga! All things considered, this is a solid movie. It's realistic, and it can get downright disturbing sometimes. The action was good, the story was good, the characters were a little shallow, they could have fleshed out Lorenz Tate character a little more, but regardless, you can tell this movie was made with a lot of passion and care. It's directed by the Hughes brothers, the same dudes that did Menace to Society. They did a pretty good job with this. They also directed The Book of Eli. That's a good ass movie too, I didn't know that was them. It was also cool to see Chris Tucker in a more serious role. I mean, he was the comic relief type character, but he did some pretty serious shit in this. I don't know why he didn't get more serious roles in Hollywood after this. I feel like he could pull it off. The girlfriend character was an asshole. This whole thing was low-key her fault. No, not really, but she should have been nicer to him. He probably wouldn't have robbed the truck if she wasn't putting so much pressure on him. He seems like a good guy too. I'm sure he would have found a good job eventually. Or maybe not though. That's the point of the movie, I guess. Strong, hardworking man, put his faith in the country, it didn't work out for him. I'm guessing that happens a lot in this country. Well, anyway, I'm sad now. That's the end of the video. Thanks for watching the whole thing. Make sure you check out Likewise. It's real useful. It's like an internet TV guide. Come voice chat with us on there. We be having a good ass time. It's super chill. You can cuss and everything. It's fun. I'll see you next time for more depressing sad hood movies. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to the video, all right, it's so I'm cool, baby. I'm skippy, baby. Still pimping.